in so much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. It seems good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that we may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. I'm right here. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, Well, how should I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which were which will be fulfilled in, in your excuse me in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, And she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my approach, reproach among people. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel Gabriel, was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed, excuse me, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. 
and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his wisdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, Well, how can this be since I am, I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill, the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and, and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He has put down the mighty from their thr thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hunger with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped her servant Israel and remembers of, her mercy, of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about mm, three months and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth full time came for her to deliver to be delivered and she brought forth a son when her neighbors and relatives heard how the lord had shown great mercy to her they rejoiced with her so it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child and that and they would have called him by the name of his father zacharias his mother answered and no he shall be called john but they said to her there is no one among your relatives who is called by that name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue loosed and he spoke praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. I'm right here. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since, who, excuse, yeah, that's right, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mighty promise to, excuse me, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, 
to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. You will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of our God, from which the day spring has of on high has vis visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Chapter 2 And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place well, we still doing census. This census first took place while <laughs> I'm sorry but we've been doing census for a long time. <laughs> while Quirinus Quirinius was governor governing Syria. <laughs> So all went to be registered, every one to his home city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, whom was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of, of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made Excuse me. They made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb now when the day of his excuse me now when the day of her purification according to the law of moses were completed they brought him to jerusalem to present him to the lord as it is written in the law of the lord every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law for, of the lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see, I'm most sure that word is going to be death, but let's check it out. That he would not see, drum roll please, death, <laughs> before he had seen the Lord Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, 
Now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. And my eyes have seen your salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, a prophetess excuse me, the daughter of Phineal, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with the husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke to him to all those who looked for a redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he had spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor and in favor with God and man. Third verse. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tibet, Tiberius, Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Etoria, and the region of Trachon, let's say, let's call that Trachonitis. Okay, we'll call it Trachonitis. And Licinius, tetrarch of Abil- Abilene. While Annas and Cyphus were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you, that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Now even, excuse me, and even now the axe is laid to the root and the trees, of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? 
he answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Then tax collectors also came to be baptized. And he said, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. Now, as the people were in expectation and all reason in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse out his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire, and with many other exhortations he preached to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being rebuked by him concerning Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, also added this, above all, that he shut John up in prison. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized, and while he prayed, the heavens were opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janna, the son of Joseph the son of Mathathiah, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of es Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maia, the son of... Nobody in the world that I know right now has named these names so far. The son of Simei, the son of... Okay, I heard of Joseph, the son of Judah. Okay, that I heard that word before. The son of Joannes, the son of Rehisa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, the son of Neri, the son of Milchai, the son of Adi, the son of Kosam, the son of Elmodam, the son of Ur, the son of Josie, the son of Eliezer, Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph. It sounds like they're repeating this stuff. The son of Jonan, the son of Elkim, El Eliakim the son of Melia, the son of Neman, all the way around, the son of Menon, the son of Matatat, 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 okay, we'll say it's going to be Matatha, Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashim, the son of Amenadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Okay, we're at chapter 4. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, hmm, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, 
All this authority I will give to you, even though he already has all authority, and their glory, and he already has all glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship me before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, commit suicide. No, he didn't say that. He said, Throw yourself down from here. <laughs> <laughs> for it is written he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone and jesus answered and said to him it has been said you shall not tempt the lord your god now when the devil had ended every temptation he departed from him until an opportune time then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. I'm at the 16th verse right here. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogues were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard excuse me, done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine there throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath, Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet. And none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. So all these in the synagogue, so all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him to the brow of the hills on which their city was built, and they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. Smooth move, huh? That's pretty cool. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with thee? What, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in, the, in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick 
for all these years, I used to always think that all the disciples just followed Jesus. They didn't marry, wasn't, didn't have jobs, all that kind of stuff. But as I begin to read the Bible, I see that that's not true. Because right here it says, but Simon's wife's mother, <laughs> I mean, he had a wife and a mother-in-law, <laughs> was sick with a high fever. And they made requests of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Now it was day. Now when now when it was day, he departed and went into deserted place, into a deserted place. And the crowd saw him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee, chapter 5. So it, was in the, so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the words of God, so the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Gennesaret? We'll, we'll agree that it's Gennesaret. And saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen who had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes about, excuse me, and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down my net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were, was breaking. So they signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. Uh-oh. When Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Awesome. Look at our God, huh? So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it happened when he had, excuse me, and it happened when he was in a certain city, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he charged him to tell no one. But go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Jesus Excuse me, just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? 
But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? <sighs> but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go your go to your house. Immediately he arose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Also these things he went out, excuse me, after these things he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. And their scribes and Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said to them, not thinking, you know, we're all sinners. But anyway, let me keep reading. 31st verse. <laughs> Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then they said to him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers and likewise those of the Pharisees? But yours eat and drink. And he said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the, day, the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. Then he spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine in the old wineskins. Or else the new skin will burst the wineskins. Excuse me. Or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. Ooh. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says the old is better. Now what happened, it's chapter 6, now what happened on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the grain field. And his disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate them, rubbing them in their hands. And some of the Pharisees said to seize and some of the Pharisees said to them, Why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? But Jesus answering them said, Have you not even read this? What David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him. How he went into the house of God, took and ate the showbread, and also gave some to those with him, which is not lawful for anyone but the priest to eat. And he said to them, The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Now it happened on another, on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught. And a man was there with whose right hand was withered. So the scribes and Pharisees watched him closely, whether he would heal the set on the Sabbath. Me personally, I would have said, do you want to do this or you want me to do it? <laughs> I mean, he was, <laughs> let me stop, let me read. Okay, let me... I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> it just makes sense to me that they was just disappointed. They knew he was going to do it. It was. It should have been that they should have, wanted to do it but anyway so the scribe and pharisees watched him closely whether he would heal on the sabbath that they might find an accusation against him but he knew their thoughts see he knew their thoughts and he said to the man who had the withered hand arise and stand here and he arose and stood then jesus said to them i will ask you one thing do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? No, he didn't say that. 
Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy? And when he had looked around at them all, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. But they were filled with rage and disgust with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continue all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called the Zealot. Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, you know those two Judases, who also became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with an unclean spirits getting blurry again and they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said blessed are you poor for yours is the kingdom of god blessed are you who are hunger who hunger now for you shall be filled blessed are you who weep now for you shall laugh Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil for the sons of man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to them who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, Offer the other also, and to him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. 38 verse, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down. Shaken together and running over will men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? But do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye? Hypocrite! 
First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. But why do you call me Lord, Lord? Let me read that again. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you whom he is like. This is good. I'm liking this. Hallelujah. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Chapter 7. Hold on, let me see. You, you two are just still there. Trying to find out who this is. It says I had two visitors. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to stop at chapter 7 and continue later, okay? You guys be blessed. I love you guys. Bye for now.